win and move on, lose and you're done. Brothers, one more week before the playoffs get going. Hey, how are you? Jason Horwitz with you on the Chase Fantasy Football Series exclusively here on CBS Sportsline and here to help me out via satellite from Miami. Welcome in Jamie Eisenberg. And Jamie, before we get started, just want to congratulate you. I know you're a Florida alum and got to be ecstatic that your team is playing the Ohio State Buckeyes and future fantasy stud Ted Gidd Jr. in the national championship game. Jason, I'm extremely ecstatic, but don't forget about fantasy stud Tim Tebow. Yeah, well, you know, Jamie, he does have to show that he can do more than just run the football at one point in his, in his career. He'll get that opportunity next year when Chris Leak uh, is no longer there. Absolutely. <laughs> All right, let's take a look at quarterbacks. You're starting quarterbacks, and speaking of former college studs, Vince Young, he's becoming a stud in the NFL. Five and four as a starter, and he's putting up the points as well. At Houston this week, a favorable matchup there as the Texas secondary not very good. Meanwhile, Michael Vick at Tampa Bay. Last time he played the Bucks, over 125 yards rushing and a touchdown. He also had a passing touchdown. And John Kitna, he's not throwing the ball very well. Just three touchdowns, six interceptions in his last few games. But he's got Minnesota, not a very good secondary. Meanwhile, your sit -em quarterbacks, Tom Brady and Mark Bulger. And Tom Brady is at Miami. Meanwhile, Mark Bulger against that vaunted Bears defense. And most of the time when you see that, you look to sit that quarterback. I want to talk about uh, Tom Brady there, uh, Jamie. Uh, his first game against Miami this season, he had two touchdowns. Now, they've also had a couple of bad weeks. He's had a couple of bad weeks. Don't you think he's out to prove something and will have a better game this time around? You know, uh, he probably is out to prove something, but the one thing when they play the Dolphins is he's got less than 200 yards passing in his last six games against Miami. It seems like Jason Taylor is in the huddle with Tom Brady because he always seems to do something big against the Patriots. I just think you're going to see a situation. The Dolphins, even though they're probably out of the playoff race, it's almost a certain thing. I think their defense is still playing well. They're still you know, a very prideful group with Jason Taylor, Zach Thomas. they got a lot of veterans over there. So I think you're going to see that Tom Brady you know, just has a bad history against the Dolphins. If you have another quarterback option, I think you want to go that direction. He may get a couple of touchdowns, though. They get him in the red zone, and they throw the, the, the uh, bootleg. So we'll see about that. All right, how about your stardom running backs? And we're going to go to Green Bay for this one. Amon Green traveling to San Francisco. Thomas Jones, who we mentioned in roster trends this week, has got a very favorable schedule to have great weeks every week. He's at St. Louis. And Liddell bets off back-to-back 100-yard -back games this past week, 150-yard plus. He has Philadelphia team that gave up 171 to Joseph Adai, and then D'Angelo Williams ran all over the field against the Eagles. So how about your sit -em? Running back. Speaking of Joseph Adai, he's right there. He's at Jacksonville. Meanwhile, Kevin Jones against Minnesota, one of the best of the best rush defense in the NFL. And then Reggie Bush at Dallas. We'll get to him in a sec, Jimmy. I want to start with Joseph Adai. Uh, you know, he's going, you know, Jacksonville's defense back home this week, much better than they are on the road. They're only giving up eight points a game at home. But India's awful loss. Do you think it's going to be the Peyton Manning show all the time? Is that why you're going to go with uh, Adai as a sit this week? Yeah, yeah, I think you look what Adai did two weeks ago. Obviously, he had the monster game. He followed that up with sort of a dud last week, and they did lose against Tennessee. I just think, as you mentioned, Jacksonville's run defense is phenomenal. They are at home. They're a much better defensive home. They got at least two shutouts at home this year, and I think they're just going to really shut down the run game. Even Dominic Rhodes started to get back in the mix last week for the, the Colts, so that's not a really good thing for Adai owners. If you have another option there, look that direction because Adai is really going to struggle this week. All right, one real quick follow-up there. How, how do you sit Reggie Bush after last week's game? Especially, he's the Cowboys. I, mean, I know he's playing the Cowboys, but especially if you're in a league where you get points for catches. Yeah, I mean, certainly you don't. You, you, you want to ride the guy while he's hot, but I just think you're going to see him really come back down to earth. Especially again, you know, he had four touchdowns. San Francisco's run defense is awful. That's why we really have Amon Green in there. It's not like Amon Green is really doing a lot of stuff. He had a hundred yard game last week, but more because they're placed in San Francisco. If, if Reggie Bush is facing San Francisco again, obviously we start him every week. But you know, I just think it's a situation where the the, the Cowboys. Their defense is just really playing great right now. Everybody talks about Tony Romo being the big reason why they're, they're, they're turning around for their season, but their defense is a huge part of it, and I think their defense is really going to do a good job. Bill Parcells is going to take Reggie Bush out of that game. Even though Sean Payton knows the Cowboys as well as anybody because he coached there last year, I still think you're going to see Reggie Bush struggle. All right, well, Reggie Bush may have carried people into the playoffs last week with his four touchdowns, but you do have a good point. Dallas is a very good defense. All right, let's go to the stardom wide receivers from Jamie and Roy Williams against Minnesota. He's off one of his uh, worst outings of the year in the game up at Minnesota. He left injured, so he's going to look for a bounce-back game. Meanwhile, Daryl Jackson, he didn't have a touchdown last week, just the second time in eight games that he didn't get in the end zone. And Joey Galloway, we'll get to him in a second, but he's home against Atlanta. Meanwhile, how about the sit wide receivers? Javon Walker is at San Diego and one of the better pass defenses in the NFL. Meanwhile, Jay Cutler is also the one throwing him the ball. He only had two catches last week. Santana Moss against Philadelphia and Isaac Bruce against Chicago. Uh, Isaac Bruce just one touchdown his last eight. Jamie, I got to ask you about Joey Galloway. We've had him either as a start or a sit three times this season and each time he has done the opposite. 
Well, you're going out on a limb here. Why? <laughs> We love Joey Galloway. I mean, I think we just like to talk about him. Maybe his name sounds good or something. I don't know. Maybe you like the name Joey. I'm not sure what it is. But certainly I think uh, he's been much better at home than he, been, than he has been on the road. He had a good game against um, uh, Atlanta the first time he, met, he played them. He's got a good history against the Falcons. And the Falcons secondary is really not playing that great at all. I believe they're, they're 30th or 31st in the league in pass defense. They've just really struggled. Uh, he may be matched up against D'Angelo Hall, but I still think he's going to be able to put up some numbers there. And again, you know, Tampa Bay coming off a really poor offensive performance last week. They're still going to try and show up, and jo John Gruden still wants to show that he could coach in the NFL. Yeah, D'Angelo Hall has not been playing as well as he can be. All right, real quickly, Jamie, there's one other thing you wanted to mention here, and that is the Kansas City Chiefs. They have a very tough matchup this week going up against Baltimore. What do you do with guys like Larry Johnson, Tony Gonzalez, Trent Green? Well, most people can't afford to sit a Larry Johnson, but obviously if you have two better guys, you know, maybe, you know, two number two running backs that have good matchups this week, you might want to go in that direction. But, you know, Larry Johnson's going to struggle. The Ravens have the best run defense in the NFL. Uh, they, they limited their opponents to 75 yards a game, and, and I think he's just going to struggle there. You know, you, you, you might see a situation where he gets in the end zone, but don't expect 100 yards. They haven't given up a 100-yard rushing game all season, so I think he's really just going to have a hard time there. Uh, Tony Gonzalez. Another guy that's going to struggle, certainly because the speed of the, the Ravens defense, they could play him with either Ray Lewis or Ed Reed one-on-one -on -one and take him out of the game. And Trent Green, I'm scared for Trent Green's life this week. I mean, certainly he played great last week, but Ray Lewis scares me, so I'm sure he's probably scaring Trent Green right now. Yeah, understandable. But one thing to remember here, Kansas City at Arrowhead in December, seems like they never lose. But that's not a fantasy aspect, that's a record aspect. All right, Jamie, enjoy the football. Hope you get those uh, who need it uh, the help through their Week 14. We'll see you real soon, Jamie. Absolutely, Jason, and we're rooting for the Gators already, so let's go orange and blue. What are we at, 34 days to the National Championship game? But this is NFL, this is in college. Folks, there you have it, start them, sit them, week 14. Hope Jamie's advice helped you out, and we'll get to you uh, later in the week. That'll do it for the Chase Fantasy Football Series heading into week 14. But for everything else coming out of Florida, be sure to stay right here on CBS Sports Line. For Jamie Eisenberg, I'm Jason Horwitz. Take care.